Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and welcome back to another Icarus update video. No, this is not going to be an April Fool's joke, as I'm sure you know if you've read the actual patch update today, but there is a pretty big patch, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now the big feature within this patch is going to be that in-game mission timers are now a thing. Instead of having kind of an overall real-time timer, you're going to have an in-game mission timer. What this basically means is that they're going to be able to tweak missions to have very specific amount of times that tick down while on prospect, rather than ticking down while you're at work. I think this is a great feature to add to the game. I think tons of people will enjoy it. It will make the game feel like there's less pressure to play when you just want to take a break for a while, and it will just give us more reasons to change up the difficulty and maybe make it a little bit harder or easier for specific missions. It's also worth mentioning, though, that there is going to be be a 90 day time limit. This means that if you are playing in online mode, as most people do, you're going to have a 90 day overall time limit. I'm not really sure if this is going to show us in game as far as I've seen it doesn't. But with that being said, after that 90 days is up, the mission will then end. The only reason I'm bringing this up to you guys is because 90 days is a really long time and it's still worth keeping in mind as if you do go on a long vacation or you just decide to take a long break from the game, but you have left your character in the game, you still are going to want to extract them if you plan on being gone for longer than that 90 day period from the time you start the mission itself, even if say you still have say two or three days with in game time left. Either way though, I do think this is a definite net positive for the game. It's going to add a lot of benefit to a lot of missions, a lot of variety and difficulty, which we're going to talk about next. Next is that they've now added mission difficulties. So as you've already probably seen, they've had the previous little skull system where every mission was kind of this set preemptive difficulty. They still have that, saying that, hey, this mission's roughly this difficult on average. But now they also have settings to each mission that you can choose, which will change the amount of rewards you get. So this is going to actually work pretty simplistically. You've got three major options here, which is easy, medium, and hard. Easy is going to give you about half of your normal reward. Medium will give you the normal amount that you got previously for missions. And then hard will give you 1.5 times the amount. Now, it's also worth mentioning that on easy mode, it will reduce the spawn rate and difficulty of certain mobs. For an example, you might have, say, a minus 50% bear respawn rate or a minus 20% scorpion spawn rate. Therefore, if you are doing a mission where you need to hunt down a lot of bears, this could be a negative for you. But it's just worth mentioning since it could be also a really good thing if you're doing a mission where you just have to run long distances and you just don't want to deal with the things in your way. It will also change their stats, their aggression, and many other things. The biggest one I want to talk about though is that when you're playing on hard mode, hard mode will limit the amount of respawns that you can have on several different missions. The way this works from my understanding is after you hit that respawn limit, it will then basically lock you into the mission saying, hey, you can no longer respawn. You have to be revived by an ally. Otherwise, there's really nothing you can do. So just keep in mind when you're choosing hard mode, there is a respawn limit. There's also hardcore mode, which adds another 1.5 multiplier. So if you're doing hard and hardcore, you would get double your reward. And what this does is basically just makes it so you have one single life. If you die, you cannot respawn. After you are dead, you have to be revived by an ally. Otherwise, your character is stuck on the mission. Insurance can also be toggled on, which is a little bit strange, but insurance basically gives you less of a reward overall, which will then also make it though so that your character cannot be lost when the prospect timer ends. So if you don't know if you're going to be able to complete the mission in time, or if you don't know if you're going to be able to finish within that 90 day time period, you can turn this on. But if, and if your character actually dies, you will not lose them. Or say if your character dies and you're playing on hardcore mode, you won't lose them. You'll still get them back at the end of the prospect timer. So it's just something I wanted to mention to you. It is an option to turn on on basically every mission. So if you're just trying to speed run through the story, you can turn insurance and easy on for every single mission that you want to and just speed run through it. However, again, you will get things like XP multipliers, negative XP multipliers, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So just make sure to read the modifiers before deciding what difficulty you want to put on. Once again, I think this is a huge net positive for the game. I think a lot of players think the game is too easy and a lot think it's too hard. So this will give those players kind of an option to either change it to the way they want 
or make it a little bit easier for those new players first coming into the game. Since we are talking about missions and changes to them, I just want to very quickly mention there is a little border around missions now that will unlock something for you. So that is going to be in the game, and it's just a nice little feature for new players who don't know which missions unlock different things. Next up is the temperature rebalance. They've gone a little bit back onto how the previous system worked, where having specific armor or drinking specific things or that give you resistance to actual cold and heat will now still give you that resistance and make it so that you have to get colder before it will actually make it so that you get cold and start to die or hot, etc., whichever direction. The idea here, though, is that they've still made it so that you cannot max it out, so you cannot just be completely resistant to the cold and heat, but instead now have more of a cushion before you actually get to the point where you have to be worried about freezing or overheating. Again, I think it's a net positive. A lot of people didn't like the new system they implemented last week, and I'm really excited to see how players will interact with this and what the new meta for armor and things like that will be. Speaking of armor, we do have some new workshop items. They've now added the sickle in there, so you can now get an exotic sickle. There's also a new high-end variation to a lot of the exotics, which is going to come in the form of the Larkwell Martinez brand. These ones seem to have basically just extra or different bonuses maybe would be a better way to put it. Instead of maybe an extra 25% yield, you might get, say, minus 10% carry weight to wood or ore or something like that. You have an axe, a pickaxe, a hammer, a sickle, a knife, and a spear that's been added for that. And there is also just a regular sickle in case you were wondering. So yes, that's in the game too, if you just want to get the regular sickle. These are very expensive. They cost about 1,000 exotics to research and 400 to actually use. So just keep that in mind when trying to make that decision. Now, the last Last big thing we have here is the new mission that they've implemented, which is Preservation Stockpile. From what I understand, this mission is going to be very highly focused on drying out meats and going ahead and putting those probably in a pod and shooting them back up to space, just like pretty much every other stockpile mission. So do look forward to this one on our channel. We're going to probably be making a video on it probably sometime in the next few days. So just keep an eye out for that as we always try to do the new missions as soon as possible. Now, there are a few extra things in here that I did want to mention, but the big one that I feel I have to let you guys know about is the fact that they've added a button to watch the no rescue video on the title screen. If you've ever wondered really what the lore is about Icarus or things really didn't quite connect for you, I highly highly recommend you go ahead and watch this. It's right on the title screen when you launch the game and it'll be on the right hand side. I highly recommend you click it as it will give you a good idea as to what the lore is about. It's actually a pretty entertaining little video if you like the game Icarus and if you don't like it it's a good way to actually introduce you to what the game is if maybe you haven't bought this yet or you have a friend that hasn't bought this yet. You can send it to them since it's on YouTube and it'll give them ideas to what they can expect. Aside from that it's really just a bunch of bug fixes, crash fixes, and other little tweaks so I'm really not going to get too much into that at this stage just know that there is a lot of fixes in here and this patch is really more focused on the content it seems than it is on other things so with that being said thank you guys so much for watching I am Game Advisor I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you want to see more Icarus and other survival game content do consider subscribing to our channel we make new videos all the time we do an update video every single week usually on the same day that it comes out or the day after and thank you once again I'm Game Advisor, I'll see you next time.